Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Brunton, and I've been thinking a lot about the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. I know a lot of you have too. Uh, this is affecting all of us. And I've been thinking a lot about whether or not I should uh, kind of jump in with any educational material about, uh, about the coronavirus. And to be honest, I've been uh, very hesitant. I have no medical degrees, uh, I'm not a doctor, and the last thing I wanna do is mislead anyone. Uh, all of my degrees are in mathematics and engineering. But the more that I think about this, um, this is a curve we've all seen, this is the flatten the curve picture. Uh, and the more that I think about it, this whole idea of flattening the curve is uh, really a control problem, okay? So uh, what I really wanna do is think about COVID-19 and flattening the curve specifically as a control problem or from the lens of control theory. Uh, and so, you know, I wanna start off at the very outset with a caveat. No one should make decisions based on what I'm gonna talk about here. Uh, these should not be used for policy decisions. I'm gonna get numbers wrong. I am not gonna give any recommendations about what anyone should do. But I have decided uh, to make a short sequence of videos essentially thinking about uh, COVID-19 and controlling or flattening the curve from the lens of control theory. And the reason I'm doing this is because I think that there is a lot uh, that we can learn from this perspective of control theory and how we control complex systems. In fact, this system exemplifies many of the most kind of interesting and challenging aspects that control theory deals with and has dealt with uh, for decades, okay? And so I think uh, that there is some value at least in thinking about this uh, from a controls perspective. What is the impact of, of delays in your measurements or imperfect models? What are some strategies for controlling these types of systems, okay? So I have decided uh, to make this series, uh, and now I'm on a mission to kind of educate as many people as possible about control theory. Um, I have for a while. Uh, and if you wanna help, uh, please you know, subscribe. You can also follow uh, updates on Twitter, at EigenSteve, uh, and share this with people, okay? So I wanna talk about, uh, this is kind of the overview video, and I'm gonna go into depth in some of these topics in, in follow-up videos. But to, to kind of oversimplify the disease system, one of the things we're really, really uh, concerned with, or one of the outcomes that we wanna model, is the, the rate of infections over time. Okay, so this is a curve that many, many of you have seen, this kind of exponential growth. Uh, so as a disease enters a population and starts to spread, it starts off spreading exponentially. At some point, that exponential uh, growth ends because there's no more people uh, or there's less people that are susceptible to, to being reinfected or infected. And then that uh, eventually tapers off. But the big concern is that if this, uh, this kind of infection rate is larger than the capacity of our healthcare system, then there are huge, huge problems. Uh, and so the chances of people dying uh, goes way up, and also this, this puts a lot of other people at risk who are already vulnerable. If the healthcare system is overtaxed, uh, then a lot of vulnerable and sick people are gonna suffer because of this. And so um, kind of the, the strategy that a lot of people have been have been talking about is this idea that we want to control the system through some actions to you know flatten this curve to be below the healthcare capacity and it's necessarily going to stretch it out um, and at our disposal there's lots and lots of things we can do and I'm not you know this is not exhaustive this is just a cartoon okay so we've already done a lot of these we've closed uh, shops and restaurants, uh, limited lots and lots of travel, canceled conferences. Uh, we don't hand, you know, shake hands anymore. Uh, we're also, you know, we. Uh, it's also recommended that you wear face masks. There's a lot of medical research. People are working hard on vaccines, which would be, you know, a big control knob. Uh, and there's also uh, this this educational piece, and that's what I'm hoping to help with is, you know, understanding how this works and how the system works and how control works actually makes the control more effective. I think that's a really, really important point, is that knowledge about this system actually makes these controllers more effective. Um, good leadership makes these controllers more effective. That's critical. Um, and I'll point out, in a lot of the control theory I talk about, you have this control algorithm. 
in this case, we are all part of this control algorithm. Every human, every government, uh, every company, we are all part of the controller. Uh, we're a part of this algorithm, and our actions are, you know, are what makes or breaks the system. Okay, uh, and also I want to point out that. You know, there's this this idea of, of flattening the curve. There are other aspects of the cost function of the optimization that you know world leaders uh, and and business leaders are trying to optimize. This is a complex, multi-objective optimization. We don't want the economy to completely collapse. We don't want people to die in mass. There's big, serious issues uh, that this control problem you know has to bear on. So that's what I'm going to talk about. Okay. So I always abstract things a little bit to just, you know, you have some system that you want to control and your controller is going to actuate or affect the system uh, and there will be some outcome. So after you do your actuation, there will be some outcome. And so in this case, our set point is essentially what we want that disease curve to look like. We want to flatten that curve, so we set some, uh, some curve. And we're going to try to uh, predict some control actions that would get us there. Okay, and in the diagram I've drawn here, this essentially relies entirely on forecasting our model of the system. We use a model of what we think the system is going to do to cook up a controller to get us to where we want to be. And for those of you who know anything about control theory, you know that this is kind of problematic. Okay, if we're not actually measuring what the system is doing and feeding that back uh, to our controller, we're not going to be able to do that good of a job. Okay. Uh, so this kind of a control strategy relies on a very good model of our system, and I think you know really good epidemiological models are hard to come by. These are tough, tough systems. Uh, this kind of control is not robust to uncertainties. So there will be uncertainties in our model. There will be things we can't measure. There will be you know things that are outside of our control. Parameters will change. The model will change in time as the seasons change, as people's actions change. Uh, all kinds of uncertainty in this system, and it's very hard for this controller to handle those uncertainties when you're not measuring and feeding back the system. Okay, and so uh, you know, obviously, the system is going to have disturbances and things changing it over time. So the strategy that you would normally take in a control system is to measure as much as you can about what your system is doing and use that measurement as a feedback signal to update your controller on whether or not it's actually doing the job that you want it to be doing, okay? And you know, this is one of the things that stands out to me in all of this is uh, in some cases, in some countries, there are you know really good measurement networks. Uh, so, for example, in East Asia, you know years ago there were the SARS uh, scare. People were were really afraid that SARS was going to do what COVID is doing now, uh, and so. After that, there was a lot of surveillance infrastructure that was put into place so that you could take, uh, you know, really good measurements of the system. Um, a lot of detective work, going and finding the sick people and then tracing who they talk to and going and, and kind of searching through the network uh, to measure what's actually happening in your system. And on the other hand, there's a lot of countries where we just are not measuring enough uh, of the system for whatever reason to get this feedback signal that we really, really need. Okay, but I can't stress enough the importance of feedback and measurements in your system. Of course, those measurements are going to have noise. Of course, they're not perfect. But what feedback allows you to do is especially compensate for uncertainties in your model. So even with a relatively poor model with uncertainties, with disturbances, with noisy measurements, measuring your system and feeding it back can have a huge impact on your ability to control even very complex nonlinear high dimensional dynamics. Okay. Now, one of the things, uh, again, that I think is just very uh, pertinent about this particular control problem is the issue of time delays. So I talk a lot about time delays uh, in, in my control boot camp, and we've known for a long time that if there are time delays in any of the stages of this control system, that has a really negative impact on how well we can control the system, how robust our control is, what kind of performance we can get, how, uh, how effectively we can, we can achieve the set point, and how fast uh, and responsively. Okay? And that's really worrisome because there are lots of time delays in the system. We know that there, you know, there is an incubation period in the virus. It takes time for symptoms to show up. 
it takes time for this to spread to other people. Uh, the measurements take time. It takes time to run a test and see if someone actually has the virus. When you enact a new control law, it takes time for that to go through chains of command and actually get into you know, the minds of all of us and to actually be uh, an effective control strategy. And so those time delays really worry me a lot because uh, I know from a control standpoint how sensitive uh, control problems are when you have big time delays. And so just one strategy when you have time delays is to use a model-based controller. Basically, you use the model of your system to cook up the best plan you can predicting the future. And then you have a slower feedback controller that actually measures how your system is doing and feeds that back to slowly correct. And so this is kind of a one-two punch of a fast model-based controller and a slower uh, kind of supervisory feedback controller based on the measurements of your system. And as far as I know, this is kind of the best strategy we have for controlling systems uh, that have big time delays where you have model uncertainties, uh, but what you, where you really do need robust performance as soon as possible, as quick as possible. So I think this is really relevant uh, to kind of understanding strategies for you know, flattening the curve uh, and, and effectively controlling uh, this situation. Okay, so um, in this series, I'm going to zoom into different parts of this control problem. Okay, so, so this is kind of how I view the world. This is massively oversimplified. Again, please don't use this for actually making decisions. Just use this for understanding how to control systems in general. Uh, so we are going to zoom in on modeling the disease system itself. Uh, so we're going to talk about you know, agent-based models, networked dynamical systems, high-dimensional nonlinear models, uh, SIR models. And again, none of these models are going to be perfect. I don't believe a perfect disease model exists. Uh, and one of the things I want to stress is that even imperfect models can be very useful in this feedback architecture, okay? So, uh, so we need to not just completely throw away models just because they're not good. Control theory actually gives us a formal way of controlling systems when we know that we have imperfect models, okay? That is what control theory does. We're also going to zoom in on what types of measurements we can take, how time delays will affect the system, uh, kind of just general issues with sensing uh, a complex high dimensional networked dynamical system with time delays. This has a huge impact on the effectiveness uh, of our control. We will also talk about the control strategies uh, themselves. I'm going to in particular talk about model predictive control. Uh, I've done videos on this in the past. Really model predictive control is very close to what governments are actually doing right now uh, based on you know, forecasting where they think the world is going to be in a month or two months or however long, uh, and then you know, making a control decision and then seeing, did this actually go the way we thought it would? Do we need to make more or less aggressive control decisions? So model predictive control is going to be a very, very useful way of thinking about how to control a system that has imperfect models uh, and, and these time delays. And especially, you know, in control problems, usually there's a limit to how much you can do. Like your controller can't do everything. You can't go force every person to do everything you want them to do. And so model predictive control also deals with uh, limits and saturations on the controller, on the actions you can take, on the dynamics themselves. And so it's a very, very useful perspective to be thinking about these control problems. Uh, okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about is understanding just kind of the spread of infectious diseases in a complex high dimensional networked dynamical system like humans on planet Earth uh, from the, the perspective of control theory. Now I guess uh, kind of one other point I want to make is that, you know, implicit in all of this, I've said this so many times before, Control theory is really applied optimization where you're trying to shape the response of your system that you're trying to control through some control strategy. And the optimization problem here is really delicate. Um, you are literally talking about human lives, uh, the global economy. There's all kinds of real uh, you know, stake 
here in this optimization <laughs> problem. And so defining the cost function, that is a moral issue. That's, that's not something that any one of us can do. Um, that's a real problem is defining that cost function. This stresses the importance of leadership and education. We have to know what we're talking about and we have to have leaders uh, that lead um, and that actually help us shape that cost function and effectively build these control strategies. Um, and we need to listen to the models. We need to listen to the experts. This is, this is very important. Um, so what I hope uh, to kind of convey to you through this series is the importance of modeling, even though they're imperfect, and kind of what is the flavor and texture of some of these models. Uh, you know, why do we get exponential growth? Why does it saturate? Uh, how does this spread on networks? I want to give you a flavor for how you would sense systems and the importance of latency and time delays, uh, control strategies, and then kind of this bigger picture of infrastructure on sensors and actuators. You know, ideally, we'd have a lot of these sensing situations, uh, surveillance systems in place already. Uh, and so that's, that's something I, I also want to talk about is just kind of control design from the ground up. How would you build a system that was as robust to an epidemic as possible? Okay, so that's all coming. Uh, again, I you know really feel passionately about educating people in control theory, uh, and I hope that that you learn something from this. All right, thank you. <laughs>